that we have a lot to add, that we go around the room and there's a lot of comments, uh, that we have some, a little bit of structure, especially that can kind of come from, from the text of the Bible and, and guiding us in these things. But uh, it would be a good thing if we ran out of time because we have a lot of good discussion going on that challenges us from the text of God's Word. So let's just go ahead and dive in and uh, let's begin with a word of prayer and then we'll, we'll begin class. All right, let's pray. Father God, we're thankful you love us and we're thankful you're so abundant in your blessings to us uh, that you give us so much to be positive about and help us to know that uh, it's possible uh, to lean on you and lean on your, your truths in order to live in a positive way. Help us this morning, uh, but especially help us in the days to come and the months to come uh, to challenge ourselves to live these things out uh, so that not only are we uh, more pleasing to you, but that we also are able to reach a world uh, that may have lost hope and uh, looks for the negative in things. Help us to be able to show them the positive things from you. We're thankful most of all for Jesus and how all these things that we study and learn, he gives to us and models for us. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Okay, good morning. Uh, we do have a book that we are largely following along the way, and it's called Positive Christian Living by Brother J.J. Turner. And we ordered 100 copies of those, I believe, right? And we are already out of those, which is a good thing. We're thankful for that. So if you don't have a book, oh, then he's got one. How much is it worth to you? <laughs> you might can pay for all the rest of the books we order just by buying this one. Um, so if you don't have one, that's okay. Maybe scoot over next to someone who does. And if you'll be back Wednesday, we'll have more of these available and you can get your own copy Wednesday night. Uh, if you're near Denny here or willing to get up, come get this one. Come get this one now. That'll be helpful to you. A couple of thoughts. Um, hey, Matt, I need you to move the cursor over. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for being ready to go. I love that this book is really concise. It's a short book, but yet 13 uh, chapters and squeezes a lot of information into these 13 chapters. So that'll challenge us uh, because it's concise and that'll cause us to have to dig in and look up passages on our own and look into some stuff during the week. And that is a good thing, okay? And so I hope that you'll see that in the book itself. Uh, it was originally published, I thought this was interesting, in 1983. That's the year I was born. And yet it's just as relevant 35-ish years later as it was when it was written because it is from the ever-relevant Word of God. And so for that, we're thankful that 35 years ago, Brother Turner published this, and it's still helpful to us today as it was because it constantly points us to the Word of God. Now, opening question, one that he asks in chapter 1. So you bump into a friend, bump into someone that uh, maybe is an unbeliever, maybe someone who's just not all that active in their faith as a Christian. And they say, why are so many of you Christians so negative? Why do you seem so miserable? I can be just as negative and miserable without church, without Christ, as you are with them. What would you say? What would you think? And then what would you say? Is that a true assumption? All right. Good. All right. I largely agree with you. I think that's a, a, a true statement about us at Parish. I think we are largely positive and, and have much to be positive about. I'm thankful to hear you say that, Miss Sandra. That means a lot to, to us and to, to hear that. Okay. 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 Very good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Good observations. Good thoughts. Very good. Along that line, sometimes, uh, you know, we look at happiness and, or contentment or being positive in different ways. 
Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, when your definitions are off, the world's definitions are off, or unfaithful people's definitions are off, then suddenly, hey, I'm, that's negative. Right, okay. Yes, Brother LT. <laughs> yep. Right. That's possible. Absolutely. Okay. That's true. He gets into that even in this chapter, one of the, in a couple of those lists about the importance of working and being involved, being connected to this. Absolutely. All right. Yes. I did not name that when someone claims to be a Christian that they're negative. They're not really. Sure. Yeah. Because we can be a Christian and have negative. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Sometimes people get the wrong idea of that. And sure. They look at that influence that every person says they're Christian yeah. to decide whether or not. Sure. Sure. Right. Don't you think somehow every bad body has an empty thing that sometimes. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Right. Okay. All right. I, I would agree. Isn't that one of the things that the rest of us get negative about, though? Right? Well, they're never going to change. Is the way we think, but is that a true statement? Is there hope? Yeah. If there's hope for us to be positive, in spite of their neg negativity, there's also hope for them to be positive despite their negativity. And so, um, yeah. You know, it's yeah. Just like you asking someone how they feel today or something. Well, sometime after they get through telling you, you're sorry you asked. Yeah, you learn to ask a different question next time, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's one of the quotes I put up here from the intro. Yep. So let's dive in. A couple of thoughts that I isolated from that introduction. The introduction will step all over your toes. Before you get to chapter one, if you read that page, page and a half, two pages of the introduction, uh, that, that squares it right, right in the middle of the forehead. Christianity centers, centers on a positive Savior based on a positive hope revealed in a positive message. So the foundation of Christianity as a, quote, system, as a person to follow and following Christ, it's inherently positive. From there, it encourages us to be positive in our attitudes and our actions. So that's the basis of this whole life we're living when we decide to follow Christ. When we live negatively, it means we have not accepted fully the joy and the peace from God as a reality in our lives. We'll talk about one of those principles from the text of John 8 in just a moment. When one lives negatively, it is not Christ or Christianity who has failed, but it's the individual who has failed. Man is the weak link. That might be a decent intellectual answer to the person who's skeptical and says, why are so many of y'all negative? Well, it's not the system that's failed. It's the person. It's the individual who's chosen otherwise despite what has been revealed. It insults the great emancipator, he says, to live constantly in the bondage of fear, worry, and negativism. Why did he go to the trouble of freeing us and then telling us he has freed us from truth, by truth to then, to then say, I'm so caught up, I'm so uh, confined, enslaved to these things. Powerful question. The key, he says, is to become a positive Christian in your daily living. It starts with a positive attitude, but it's also one step beyond a positive spiritual attitude. This is action. We must change our attitudes before we will ever change their lives. We have a world that needs to be changed? Yes. Is it negative? Yes. Large degree it is. When we change our attitudes, 
we can begin to change their lives. I may not be able to change the world, but I can change myself. A better world begins with a better me. When I thought about these principles at the end of the introduction, I thought about John 4, the Samaritan woman. Just based on how we know life works, a woman who's been married to that many men, caught up in sin to that degree, she likely has some deep hurts in her life. But she went into the town nearby and she brought many people to Jesus. He changed her life, her perspective, such that it changed her attitude, such that it changed her actions. And then they came to Jesus in the droves. And they even said, it's now no longer because of her that we believe, but it's because of what we hear from you. But she was the bridge because he changed her attitudes and her life, her living. Okay, he offers this question in the book and uh, going to do our best to, to kind of pick out some folks from time to time during the week to call on for these kind of questions just so that we have a little preparation going. And so for this idea, uh, the elders decided to do it, but Denny was kind of the one that, that thought, had the initial uh, proposal for it. And uh, so I asked Denny if he'd be prepared to answer this question in your own words, define positive Christian living. What you have to say for us, Denny? What's that? I just want to start off by saying that uh, 24 years ago, when we left home, we was going to church to a different place. And uh, before we got to parish, uh, I asked Ann, I said, you want to go to church parish today? And she said, if you do, yeah. So uh, I'd had an invitation to, to uh, come to the parish church and... Uh, we came that morning to Paris, and we've been here ever since. And uh, I just wanted you to know that that is the time that our positive Christian living began because this is a positive church, and there's great people in this church. We love every one of you, and uh, we want to continue to work with you and to be a part of it. And being positive is very good in any, in any walk of life. Being positive is good. That's what we need to be positive in our daily living, in our work, or whatever we're doing. Positive is always more enjoyable than negative. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, glad that the elders decided to, to uh, use this material and to have this class for everybody so that we all can be on the same page of everything we do in Christian living. And uh, I wanted to uh, read a couple couple of verses. Joey, can you pull that up for me? There you go. All right. Uh, I want to read two verses from uh, Philippians uh, chapter 3. I want to read verses 13 and 14. This is the Apostle Paul when he was in prison. It said, uh, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that which are behind and reaching forth under the things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So that, I think that'd be good for us to forget about the things that are past, that are bad in our lives, and let's press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling that we might be in heaven with God and each other someday. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Sure. Very good. Thank you so much, Brother Denny. Appreciate that. Matt, you have a thought quickly? I think that while the prison living is when a person conducts themselves in a way that those around them don't really have to ask or wonder if they're a Christian because it's obvious in the way that they act and talk and treat other people. They're generally happy and don't have the troubles of life weighing them down because they have a more eternal view on what really matters. Okay, very good. Yeah, very good. It's obvious. Troubles do come in their lives, but how they handle those and they don't weigh them down, that's a good phrase. Good phrase. Here's what I had the thought of myself to answer that question. Red or black? Does it make a difference? Red or black? Sometimes it's helpful to know the difference, which one is which. You don't want to get mixed up in checkers or when you're jumping off your car battery, right? You want to keep them separate? Red or black? Does it make a difference, red or black, when it comes to a budget? Your family budget, P&L if you've got a business, right? You want to be operating out of the, which side? The black, right? 
The red means you don't have any to operate out of. You want to be operating out of the black, okay? So black is positive. So positive Christian living is living out of the surplus, the flow of God's blessings. If I'm constantly having to draw out of this sense of, of being overdrawn emotionally and spiritually, and that'll affect us physically, that's probably a good sign that I'm not fully enjoying the blessings that God gives. Am I operating out of the positive flow, the surplus, net positive of God's blessings, spiritual blessings in my life? All right, let's dive into some things from, or one more way of kind of illustrating and, and bringing these things home, applying into our lives. Anyone dare answer the question on a scale of one to ten? Rate your positive Christian living attitude. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Michelle said eight. Roger said probably an answer we would all amen to. Not nearly as high as it ought to be. I, I struggle with this. Um, I told Denny before we began this morning, it's already been helpful for me just in thinking about these things and studying them for about the past month since we got a copy of the book in. Um, I, if I'm being honest, I might be at about a six. And I'm kind of regretful to say that. I've just let some external circumstances that directly affect us, some that don't directly affect us, just cause me to think, man, what's going to happen? And man, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. And, and uh, that's hard. It's been hard for me. I don't have any reason to be negative. And yet I've allowed myself to stay that way. And so uh, maybe some insight can come from asking ourselves that question. Based on the way God tells us we should live, what kind of things God tells us we have, where do we add up? Where do we fall on that sliding scale? I think the, the more relationship we have with each other, yeah. we strengthen each other in that way. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Right. You remember the, uh, the quote at the beginning of It's a Wonderful Life? And whatever those celestial beings are, I don't know. You know it's, it's bad theology, obviously. It's not true. But they bring Clarence on the scene. He's this angel in training, and they're telling him about George Bailey, and they say something's terribly wrong with him, and he says, Clarence says, oh, no, is he sick? They say, no, worse. He's discouraged. And so here we find ourselves being discouraged sometimes by other people, by circumstances beyond our control, by our own decisions. And so not only what, does what God give us, help us to, to find our way out of that, but what we have in Christ and our relationships with each other is going to be the way to keep supporting and building that positive attitude and positive living in our lives. All right, let's dive into the text of God's Word. He lists three texts in the course of the chapter, especially he lists uh, a couple of these in the introduction, one of these, uh, or a couple of these in chapter 1, and then 1 John 5 in the closing questions. So they all have a common theme. Positive Christian attitude which should result and needs to result in positive Christian living is going to be based off of the fundamental assumption and, and recognition, the understanding that we have, confident we have eternal life. And so John 8, the, prob, the, the principle of the great emancipator freeing us, we reference that quote from the introduction. John 8 talks about how he has made us free. And so you look at John 8, beginning um, verse 31, I've got up there through 37. And so he said to the Jews, if you abide in my word, that's living, constant living, you are truly my disciples, you're actually, you're authentically my disciples. And you will know the truth and it will, the truth will set you free, release you. There's some pushback. Hold up. We are Abraham's offspring. How can you say we're in bondage in the first place? You're offering us freedom, but freedom from what? We ever give some pushback when we read verse 32 and think about the freedom that he promises? Well, I sure don't feel free. If we're negative, if we're given over to worries and, and anxieties and fears, we might push back as they did. Then he said... Uh, verse 34, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. You see that is the opposite side, the contrary side to abiding in my word. So if we practice negativity, we're enslaved to negativity. 
Notice the result. Verse 35, the slave doesn't remain in the house forever. If we're enslaved to sin, then we don't have the promise of the future. We don't have the promise of eternal life. But the son, he remains forever. The reminder again, verse 36, if the son is the one who set you free, you will be free indeed. So truly, authentically, fully my disciples, free indeed, fully free. Then he says this, verse 37, I know that you are a physical offspring of Abraham, and yet you're against me. Why? Because my word finds no place in you. Remember that from the introduction? He says, the person who knows all these things to be true in Christ and still chooses to live a negative life has not truly found a place in their life for the joy, the peace, the freedom that God gives. He says, because you have not found a place for what I'm saying, it doesn't matter that you're a son of Abraham. See how strong that is? When we know the truth about our freedom in Christ, the eternal life that we have, and we still choose to live negatively, then his word has not found a place in us. Absolutely. And where does he go from here in this text? You're listening to your father. He doesn't capitalize the F. The translators don't capitalize the F there, right? Because your father is the deceiver. Your father is the devil. So isn't it likely, as Miss Sandra was talking about how easy it is for the devil to come after us when we're negative, that if we are continually choosing to not only think negatively but live negatively, we're listening to the wrong voice? We're not listening to the one who frees us. We're listening to the one who's trying to capture us, the one who's deceiving us. John 10. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, even the son of son of God knew he needed some strength and support from from those who were closest to him. Yes, Miss Peggy, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 It definitely is temptation, yes. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it does it does us no good to be fake positive, right? Yeah, we, we don't like false positive medical tests, and we don't need to be false positive Christians where it's just a, a mask, a, a putting on of a positive face. Uh, truly positive living sometimes will include difficult conversations. It'll include asking for help. It'll include saying, I'm, I don't know where to turn. 
that's still truly positive Christian living. So yeah, that's a great point. Mac, what you got? Yeah. Right. What do you do with it when it comes? Yep. Yeah. 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 When, when God has been angry, when Jesus was angry, it was for righteous anger sake, right? It was what breaks his heart. Well, sin and the effects of sin break his heart. That should make us angry. But then also when the things of life do cause us to be angry, what do we do with it? Even he acted on that anger in a righteous way, in a way that helps people to still come to be able to know him. All right, John 10, important passage. Notice quickly, uh, the setting is uh, the, the sheep, the shepherd imagery. And uh, he's going to first say he's the door of the sheep. He's the access to the sheep. Then he's going to say he's the great shepherd of the sheep. And he's in contrast to, quote, all who have come before him. And that may be those who have been kind of false Christ, those who have claimed to be the Messiah. That could just be those false teachers of the Pharisees and other Jews uh, that... Uh, you know, that went against God's prophets. They mingled with the outsiders. He said all of those people had selfish motives in their, quote, religion. Even though they were Jews, even though they claimed to love God, they had selfish motives, and they ultimately came to take. I have come to give. I have come to give, to give you life, and to give it more abundantly. When you think about that shepherd-sheep relationship, that's what the shepherd's responsibility is. Give the sheep life. Give them a clean path. Give them a path of safety give them abundant resources of nutrient, keep them out of the heat, keep them away from, uh, from those who, you know, predators who would come after them. Notice verse 11. Not only does he say he's the good shepherd, not only does he say he gives life, he shows us how he has given life and that he has laid down his own life for us. So you have a shepherd guiding sheep. And he's willing to do almost anything to keep them safe, but he doesn't stand in the way between a, a coyote or a wolf and a sheep. How good of a shepherd is he? If he doesn't lay down his life for his sheep, how much does he really love the sheep? So he says the hired hand, he'll, he'll run. When a real danger comes, he'll run the other direction. If it's me die for a bear, at the hands of a bear instead of my sheep dying, I'm not going to do that. That's a hired hand. But as the good shepherd, I put myself on the line for my sheep. That's how we know we have all these things in great abundance. We have access in and out. We have pasture. Our needs are met. All these things he gives us abundantly. He gives himself. He gives intimacy. In this text he says, what I have with the Father I'm giving to you. And then he always exercises his authority, the authority he does have in our best interest. So that's all those reasons are great reasons to remind us not only just this general word, positive Christian living, but especially the abundant life in God and all that he gives us is certainty in eternal life. And finally, 1 John 5, God gave us. It's now possible. It's now manifest. It's now uh, in force to give us eternal life. This life is in his son. Whoever does not have the son does not have life. I'm writing these things to you, not to cause doubt, not to cause you to worry, but in the face of those who would cause doubt, I'm writing to remind you, you do have eternal life, that you may know you have eternal life. And so I think at the basis of all of this, if we're prone to doubt our salvation, if we're prone to doubt that God could love me enough to save me, and then we're going to always struggle to get off the ground with positive Christian living. He didn't come for us to just live a hope so Christian life. But I know I'm in Christ, therefore I know I'm saved and have eternal life in him. Okay, let's dive into some of these lists. He's got two big sections of lists. Uh, pages 7 through 9 is what he calls the qualities of a positive Christian. Sage, you got one that stands out to you. Uh, right, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. So okay. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And the, the verse he quotes there, Luke six verse forty six. That's in the that's the lead in the bridge statement to Luke's version of uh, the wise man foolish man. So why do you hear the things that I say and not do them? If you hear them and do them, you're like the wise man. If you hear them and don't do them, you're like the foolish man. It's a commitment to build, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, building houses, people that build houses, you don't just, hey, I'll think I'll build here. I mean, you have to decide, pick a spot, be sure it's done correctly before you ever build. If you build it on the wrong place, it could cost you everything. Build it in the wrong way, it could cost you everything. So yeah, total commitment has to be there. Very good. Thank you, Sage. Appreciate your thoughtfulness, thinking through that and answering. Kate, you have one that stood out? Well, number one stood out to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Sure. You can take care of others. Right. But there's a point where, you know, you need to be first in our business. It's really uh, to not focus so much on yourself. We'd ask yourself to stop to right. think about all the things we're going to do and help other folks out and feel. Yeah. So right. And, and the specific advice is crucify yourself, right? Yeah. Take up his own cross daily. Follow me. Yeah. I, I, I've had that thought. And I think I even had it this morning on the way to the building. That it's such a fine line for us to identify things we need to improve. I need to work on this in me, for instance. You know, we say that to ourselves. And yet, in doing that, not make me the center of attention or the focus or the reason why it needs to be because I love God and because I want to please him more than anything. And because I know that when I do these things, it's how I'm better equipped to love other people. And so self-improvement without it becoming self idolatry is, is the key because the more I worship self, the more eventual negativity and cons negative consequences are going to come. So very good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's tr trusting in God's power, yeah. Yeah, trusting in God's power. Yeah. When you feel overwhelmed by all the things that you're trying to do, um, you've got to go to God. Yeah, if we don't ever wonder, how can I do this? We may not be thinking big enough. We may not be reaching big enough. It, it should challenge us and stretch us. Mm-hmm. Very good. Right, very good. Yep. Right. Good. That's very good. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, to say we trust his power, but then do it our way. Yep, that's not going to work. Yep. Well, very good. Glad to hear that. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that feedback. I love number four. It has the goal of growing into the fullness of Christ. You know, you, you, if we ever pick a, another person to grow into, I'm going to find some warts on that person eventually. And that's going to discourage me. I want to find where they don't measure up maybe to how I thought they did. Well, that's the danger in, in living for someone else in this life. 
But when I see Christ's mark on the wall, I'm going to keep growing up into him. And I'm, I'm looking up at it. I'm never going to get there. But he's made it possible and clear that we can keep growing more and more into his likeness. And what that means is it doesn't matter where we're at on the scale. We always have some growing to do. And that should always keep us positive because there's always a path. We never reach the ceiling. Uh, I put down number seven, trusting in uh, his God's power. Um, I, I also thought uh, he didn't list it as a number. OK, you notice he goes through 14 and then he has like one sentence that kind of summarizes the 14 things. I like that sentence. That helped me a lot. Positive Christian living is a step beyond positive spiritual thinking. It's a lifestyle. It's doing. Because I, I, I don't make any secret really that I like to think. I like to, to kind of be intellectual in my approach to a lot of things. Sometimes, if I'm not careful, I let that be a substitute for action. It's all going to start with our thinking. But if I stop with my thinking and that's all I do, that's not what positive Christian living is supposed to be. In the opposite, true, don't some people just jump head into the deep end of the pool and say, let's do, let's do, let's do, and they don't change the thinking? How does that go? And that goes about like a five-year-old who's never learned to swim jumping in the deep end. That's, that's going to lead to some dangerous things. But when we do the positive spiritual thinking, but we also ensure that it leads to action, that's uh, a quality that needs to be present. Okay, page nine has a list of rewards. What's the result? Okay, it's not wrong to think about the rewards. God and Christ continually remind us of the rewards for doing things his way. And so it's good to remember and, and dwell upon and focus upon the rewards of living this way. But Roger, you got one that stands out to you? Yeah, I got a two or three. I'm Go for it. Come up well, here. thank you. <laughs> we came here 25 years ago and... And y'all have been so positive in the things that you've taken care of my folks and, and all the sports you've been and have been to us as well. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, ultimately, number seven is the one we're looking for is to, uh, to, to gain that, uh, that crown of life, to be faithful until death. But, but getting there, and there, and there's six more, uh, Negative living is contrary to, to God's desire for us. Well, you mentioned a while ago that, that, Christ, that Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So being positive uh, is, is a part of that. Going down to three, uh, talking about the unspeakable, uh, the joy unspeakable. Uh, Paul talked about being able to rejoice in the genuineness of our faith. And, and I think that helps us to be positive when it is genuine. Uh, and it helps us defeat the devil. We draw near to God and, uh, and the devil will flee from us. Uh, he talks about in Ephesians the, uh, the armor of God and so forth. We're familiar with those. And it helps us to produce the, the fruits of the Spirit in this life. Uh, and if you read in there about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all of those things. But if you get on over into chapter 6 from uh, chapter 5 there, he says that what we sow, we will also reap. So that's, you know, that's going to be a positive thing as well. And, uh, and obviously in doing this, it glorifies God and hopefully will help get to that crown of life. But my number one was number two, that positive Christian living brings happiness and, uh, and peace of mind. And uh, the uh, talking about the Beatitudes, uh, and we look at all of those things, happy is the individual, and, and the, the Paul talked about in looking at all of his problems and, and all of the things from being shipwrecked, from being beaten, from being in jail, and many of the things he was writing. He was in prison at the time, but he was, he was talking about those things that in, in, you know, in whatever situation he was in, uh, in those things to, to be content. Uh, said, if we have food and clothing, therewith to be content. Uh, 
I lost it. But anyway, the Hebrew writer was talking about, you know, the things that we have to, to be content uh, with those things. But the uh, looking at the peace of mind and, and, the, and the happiness that comes with, that comes with the, the positive uh, part of it. And, and going back to what Denny read in there, putting away the things from the past, Paul was having to deal with the fact that he stood there and as Stephen was being stoned. But look at the peace that passes all understanding that Stephen had as he was being stoned, as Paul was there. Uh, so these are the things that, that stand out to me in, uh, in this, in, in realizing that we all have problems and we all have things that come up, and, uh, and if we dwell too much on those, being positive means having a can-do attitude. And if, we have, if we dwell too much on the problems that we have, we're, we're making the problems larger than God. We haven't gone to God with our problems. We haven't gone to God the people with our problems, the things that we've talked about. And we can overcome those when we realize how small they are in comparison to all. Thank you. Very good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jonathan, you got one reward that stands out? Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. 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 Right. Very good. Yep. Yeah, if or when, yeah. And you can almost compare that to sin because love of sin is a brings you temporary happiness. Yep. But long term consequences. Absolutely. Yep. Very good. Yep. That's right. That's true. Very good. Very good. Very good. Great thoughts. I have not read the book, and I don't know if I have any plans to read the book, but I love the title of a book um, uh, called All Marketers Are Liars. It's a marketing book, and he calls it All Marketers Are Liars, meaning, I think, they all promise that this product, this service, this whatever will solve your problems, and yet they can't really do that, right? So um, very, very good stuff. Christ, his peace, his attitudes, and his living will bring happiness in this life, peace, uh, but uh, we seek those things outside of him, then it will not. All right, very good stuff. Thank you for your time and, and thinking about and answering those questions. That's been very helpful uh, so much. Uh, there are two more lists. We won't take the time to go over them, uh, but please be sure that you do that. Uh, he's got a strategy, and he'll kind of keep developing this strategy throughout the course of, of the book. But it takes resolve. You can't do it accidentally. You've got to decide to do it. Decide now. Today's the day you circle on the calendar. Draw a line in the sand, as we sometimes say. Uh, you see the word daily keep coming up. Uh, we need to reboot our mind, renew our mind by the things of God. Uh, we need to meditate and think on the, uh, that word. We need to work on spiritual goals, spiritual improvement daily. Pray for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. We need to be with positive Christians. Number six, that's come up quite often in our discussions already this morning. Do daily activities, works of faith. And number eight, it's how simple, but how powerful. Don't quit. If we don't ever give up, then we don't ever have to suffer the consequences of giving up. Then there are reasons to be positive. Um, what do we have in our possession uh, that is positive about God? He saves us. He gives us his word, salvation, uh, power, a reward, church family, and he's constant 
and that, that living hope he gives us. A couple of things to do as we wind up this morning, as we're out of time. Again, thank you for your discussion. Thank you for chiming in. And uh, be prepared next week from chapter 2 as well. Uh, this is the chapter that's going to hurt the most probably. Okay? Accepting personal responsibility. We're, you're going to read chapter 2 and you're going to think, I thought this book was about being positive. Right? This is negative. It tells me I'm the one to blame. Right? So we got to start with ourselves and to move past ourselves and accept responsibility and stop pointing to other people and our circumstances. And that will challenge us, but it's the bedrock and a very powerful and very practical way to, to, to begin this process. All right, a couple of challenges. Just to yourself, write it down if you can. Uh, text yourself if you need to. Text your spouse. Uh, what's one way that this lesson has been encouraging to you? What's one way that you're going to apply it this week? Okay. He says three for each of these in the back of the questions, but I'm, I'm dropping it down to one. If we could just do one, one thing. Think about how much better our lives could be. And then one more challenge for you, okay? We've got a lot of people in here this morning. I don't know if we counted. This is a great number, fantastic number. But there are probably a few people that are not in here that we wish we were. So look around the room. Identify who's not here that you wish could be. And this week... Whether it's this morning in worship or whether it's this afternoon or whether it's tonight or during the week, give them a call. Go by and see them. Those two methods are probably a little more trustworthy than a text. So, I'm not, so, so try to, to make a personal contact and say, I really enjoyed class because whatever, because it was a great discussion. It wasn't just Joey uh, jabbing the whole time. Or the book's great. The book's easy to understand. Um, whatever the reason you enjoyed it, tell them this is why it was great. Not only invite them, but say, I'll sit with you. Would you sit with me in class next Sunday morning at 9? Can we accept that challenge? Very good. Very good. Thank you again. Appreciate that. And I, let me chime in. I know we're out of time. We're past time. But Rick did send a text from the mountains. Rick, Gina.